fitting an external antenna Wi-Fi to an MAS Pro L. Uh, I've done some pre-work on this one. Uh, this fell off while I was doing it, so I'll have to glue that. I'll have to glue this little cover back on again. This box has been modified with a fan and a little resistor, and it's also got uh, a PTC, um, which switches on the fan only when the uh, the heatsink gets too hot or hot enough for, for that little device to work, and then it switches on the fan. Um, this is the fitted aerial that's normally stuck to the lid. I've removed that from the lid, uh, and in the lid I have pre-drilled a little hole. It's started off as a two mil pilot hole, and then use a five point five mil uh, to ream it out to the uh, almost the right size. Then what you have to do is uh, on the on the little plug socket arrangement this socket has one side is flat hopefully you can see it there um, so what you need to do is you need to create a little flat area here this is where I decided to put the aerial there's a little bit of free space under there uh, so the wire should go in there hopefully fingers crossed uh, to make the flat you have to use a little half round uh, or semi lunar needle file Use the flat side of it, and you go in there, you flat that off, and then you have to go around the rest of it, just enlarging it like that, like that, and like that, to make it the right shape for the socket to go in. And once it's done, then it will go in, and it should fit, and it stops it from turning around as you screw it up together. Uh, take that out for now. Right, the next thing to do is you have to unsolder this little devil because Meekle don't bother to put um, a plug on the end of it. I've got a plug on the end of the uh, pigtail. You can see it there. Uh, you can get these pigtails with bare ends, which would probably be better, easier, because you don't have to bear it and solder it yourself. Uh, but I wanted this one because then I can use it on another box uh, that has just a plug. Uh, if I need to um, and you just cut off and strip back and solder and solder it in there um, that I'll probably have to do off camera because it's quite fiddly and I'll get in the way of all the camera work um, I don't know whether you can see in there is uh, if I get it in close and try and focus in there we go uh, you can see there's the central core goes up uh, try and get in even closer there you go so you see that goes up at 45 degrees that's the central core and the screen is soldered in a great big blob to the right of it as we look at it and um, basically that's exactly the same with the wire that you, uh, you're going to bear off uh, there'll be a screen very fine wires and a central core and you just solder the center core to that little tiny spot and the screen to the other bit um, the pads look like Meekle actually designed the board to have a plug and socket arrangement, but then they didn't bother fitting the socket, which probably saved them tuppence or uh, a couple of cents uh, in uh, other terms. Focus back in again. Uh, when you when you finally put it together, there's a, a couple of washers. I'm going to put that one on the inside of the case. That's a, a little crenellated washer and then the split ring lock washer is going to go on the outside next to the nut um, I decided to put it on the lid because I tried putting it on the side on a different box and it sticks out downwards of course because the, the the angle of the lid uh, so that worked but not as well as it might have so I'm going to try and put it on the top this time and I've got a couple of aerials to try this is an 8 dB dual band um, with a little socket which has a hole in the middle of it for marries to the pin on the other one uh, and this is a huge 18 db 2.4 g1 i want to see whether that works uh, how that works and whether it actually picks up any two uh, any 5g stuff 5 gigahertz stuff uh, anyway i'm going to pause it there and do some soldering and uh, i'll see if i can get some footage of that and maybe put it in in a minute okay 
Okay, desoldering. So we're going to try and get them both off, sort of together. So, yeah, they both come off together, and it's soldered across. Solder has flowed across. There, we just got rid of it. Hopefully, you can see in there. There's no two little pads, and uh, and nothing attached. Okay, I'll just pause it again while I do a bit more off-camera work. Okay, chop off the end of your wire. I'm going to chop it there, so there's a little bit of wire left on the uh, plug in case I ever need to, need it. Then you've got to strip this back, strip the outer cover back uh, from this. So I just use a little bit of the wire cutters and just grip gently and pull, and that strips it back. And uh, not quite stripped it back far enough. And it seems to have taken out the central core as well, which is a bit of a shame. So we'll try again a little bit further back. Uh, just there we go. It's coming off now. So that's the screen off. Uh, sorry, the plastic sheath off. And then you can fold back the... Uh, Hold back the screen. It's quite fiddly, this, isn't it? It'd have been easier if I hadn't cut that bit off the inside. Yeah, so it's getting there now. It's got to get all the all the screen back. And the center pulled up like that so I don't know whether you can see there so we've got a central core with a bit bare at the end and then the screen coming off the side so I'll, I'll try and uh, tidy that up a bit so like that and that is going to go that is going to go to the side like that And uh, the centre part's going to go solder in there. I'll just pre-tin it and tidy it up a little bit. Okay, so here we go. Trying to get in nice and tight. So we solder that a little bit. Clean that up a little bit. Clean the soldering iron a little bit first. And tip put that in there. And then try and get in somehow on the side here and do the screen. That should have got it. Hopefully that is now soldered in. Hopefully you can see that. Uh, we can zoom in. Mm. Zoom in a little bit. Yeah, uh, so screen is attached and the centre core seems to be attached. Zoom out again. Ooh, sorry about that. And then what do we need to do? We need to put the aerial socket through its little hole put the uh, put the crenellated washer on first it's a little compression washer thing put that in put on the split washer put on the nut Because of the flat on it, it shouldn't turn around. If it does, you have to hold the inner bit as well while you tighten it up. If it doesn't turn around, you're okay to go tightening it up here. Don't. 
and get my hand in a, another angle. Probably not getting any of this on camera, but uh, that's pretty tight. Can always tighten it up again later. Right, so that's it in position. Let's put, tuck the wire, tuck the wires in underneath. Put it back in. There it is, and then I'll screw it up. Four little screws, and uh, put the uh, put the fan thing, fan guard back on again. Have a test, and I'll come back to you in a moment. Okay, quick, quick test of the uh, signal strength and super big, fat, eighteen dB single band aerial. Seems to be about the same in its single band as the dual band eight decibel one, uh, which is kind of slightly neater, not quite as stupidly huge, uh, and it's certainly a lot better on the uh, five gigahertz band so i'd say choose a dual band 8 db aerial this is all from very 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 slight testing uh, and may not be correct in any way uh, but anyway it's a lot better than the little aerial that's uh, that little thing that's uh, that's in there as standard um, uh, so that's good good news uh, and also you with the with the socket you could always put a little extension lead and put the aerial somewhere where it was better if uh, if you find that something was blocking the signal where you want to put your box um anyway that's about it just got to get some super glue and stick the little um, cover back on again and then we'll be back to normal again but with a super duper aerial on it thank you very much goodbye